Hello, I'm State Representative Jim Butler from the 41st House District. Welcome to Ohio in Focus. Hello and welcome to this edition of Ohio in Focus, a program that brings state government to you. I'm your host, Brad Miller. I'm pleased to be joined today by State Representative Jim Butler, who serves the 41st House District, which includes portions of Montgomery County. Representative, thanks for joining us today. Glad to be here. So we're going to talk about some of the uh, legislation and initiatives that you've been working on here uh, at the State House in recent months. Um, at the end of June, Governor Kasich signed into law the state operating budget, uh, the biennial budget that will cover the next uh, two years. Um, you were very active in that process and uh, had uh, several provisions that you worked on directly uh, that were included uh, in that bill. We'll start by talking about um, the Healthy Ohio Plan, which was adopted as part of the final version of the budget. Can you give us some background on that? Sure. The Healthy Ohio Plan uh, is part of House Bill 157 in this General Assembly, and it was a it's a comprehensive major reform bill for health care that we drafted uh, two years ago. Uh, representatives uh, Haney, Sprague, uh, Romachuk, uh, former Representative um, John Adams, uh, we're all involved in, in the creation of that, uh, that bill. Um, and the Healthy Ohio Plan is part of that. And the reason why we have and why we, we've devoted so much time to um, health care reform is it's a major problem that we have um, in Ohio and all over the, the nation. Uh, we need a solution to the problem. And the problem is um, it's uh, health care costs that are simply out of control. We have to do something about that or we're going to be in big trouble. In Ohio, health care costs for, for state spending, this doesn't include Medicaid expansion, have, they have gone up over 50% from 2011 to 2017 uh, in this budget. Um, the per person costs for health care have gone up over 30%, so over 5% per year on average. Um, and if we don't do something because uh, you know, the, we're in, in good economic times, we're increasing tax revenues and so forth, uh, the next time a recession hits, and of course one will hit, uh, we're going to be in big trouble if we don't do something because there'll be more people in need of Medicaid, so those costs will go up uh, as they already have been going up, but we'll have lower revenues because of, of a future recession. So the, this was an effort to um, address uh, health care costs and having good healthy outcomes as well. Can you give us um, uh, some information about what this provision uh, does specifically, as you mentioned, uh, how it impacts Medicaid and uh, the health care decisions that Ohioans make? Absolutely. So um, in any type of interaction, say, with a physician and a patient, um, there, there are, um, there's really two ways to control cost. Either the government can do it uh, through mandates or rationing, or we can empower patients to make their own health care decisions, um, and, and, but for, the, for, for their uh, to have the best outcomes for themselves. And obviously we're opting for the, for the latter in this. We want to empower uh, patients with information so that they can make the right decisions. And the Healthy Ohio Plan, uh, what we're doing is creating uh, healthcare savings accounts and having uh, some, uh, some skin in the game for the participants. So that instead of being recipients of Medicaid, they're participants um, in a, a health insurance program, basically. And so with those incentives, there is a, a reason to uh, care uh, and look at what the costs of health care are for the participant and then uh, incentives and in this case uh, the ability to not have to pay a premium and the premiums in this uh, for this program would, would generally be about one or two dollars a month um, probably so very, very minimal very minimal because because a lot of the people obviously on Medicaid uh, have tight budgets and they all do and therefore, uh, this is a minor impact, but that goes a long way. Because what we know, um, because uh, this Healthy Ohio Plan is actually uh, uh, modeled on a, pro a very successful program that Indiana developed in 2007. Um, and that program, very similar with healthcare savings accounts and so forth, and a very um, small uh, premium amount uh, with the proper incentives, we, they, we have the data. We know it works. We know that um, there's a lot fewer unnecessary ER visits. There's a lot more preventative care uh, being done by the participants in the program and, and better outcomes uh, for that with lower costs. So we know that that program works and that's why uh, we were very happy that it was included in the budget. I was going to uh, bring that up about uh, the importance of Having 50 states, you can kind of see what works and what doesn't. And I was going to ask if this has been tried in other states as well. 
Right, and this was, uh, again, in 2007, Indiana took 40,000 patients uh, and enrolled them in the Healthy Indiana Plan. Um, they got approval from the federal government, and this included patients that were below 100% of poverty. Uh, so the, this was during the Bush administration, but the Obama administration has renewed uh, over the years their waiver, because uh, you have to get a waiver uh, in, a, in the Medicaid program to do major reforms because it's two-thirds federal money in general and one-third state money, but the um, Bush and Obama administrations have granted uh, Indiana uh, the ability to do that um, up to and including where they've now changed their program. It's a lot different than what we're modeling it on, um, but we know through, through the past seven years uh, that it does really work well. Um, a similar uh, provision that you've worked on, and again, a lot of this deals with healthcare transparency, um, is uh, in regards to uh, common health care services coverage. Is this related to the o Healthy Ohio plan, and uh, can you give us some information on that? It's not, but it's another component um, for, uh, for health care reform. And in this, we want consumers to be able to shop on, on the federal exchanges that were set up through the Affordable Care Act. Um, and have as, as much information as possible because a lot of times uh, when you're shopping, you're just looking at the monthly premiums. But that doesn't tell you exactly how much you might spend out of pocket. And this way, um, when consumers are shopping on the exchange, they'll not only be able to see the premium amounts, but they'll be able to see what the, the common services are going to cost them out of pocket in terms of uh, co-pays. So it kind of brings healthcare into the realm of how people purchase most of their products that they buy. Absolutely. Um, not in the state operating budget, but you've also worked on the, uh, the Bureau of Workers' Compensation budget earlier this season, uh, earlier this year, rather, um, the legislative season, perhaps. Uh, a transparency measure we just mentioned about um, making health care costs, bringing them out into the open so people know what they're buying. And you've mentioned in the past about how people buy groceries, how people buy other things. You see the price. And is that... Uh, a major problem with healthcare, we often hear about there being this disconnect between uh, healthcare services and, and the options people have and the prices that they pay. Well, absolutely. Back to that um, hypothetical interaction with a physician and a patient. Um, the patient has to, number one, care about what, what they're spending in healthcare, but they also have to know what it costs. And, and right now, um, at least in Medicaid, neither is present. But um, in this case, in terms of knowing what it costs, nobody knows what it costs. Um, anybody, no matter if you're on a, with a commercial plan or Medicaid or Medicare, you go into the, to the physician's office or you're going to get a scan or a lab or something like that, you go and you get it done and then 30 days later you get something in the mail and it, you get sticker shock. You know, it's jaw-dropping jaw you know, prices that are being charged. So having that be provided to everybody in Ohio, uh, and this would be a first of its kind in the nation type of reform. Um, so anytime you go for a non-emergency service, you get not only what it's going to cost you out of pocket, you get what the insurance company or Medicaid or Medicare is paying uh, for the service, as well as what the provider is charging. Um, so over time, and it will take time, then there'll be uh, an idea of cost develop um, along with, uh, and that's another provision that will be probably uh, added in rules, the ability to advertise costs. So you'll know what you're spending and you'll be able to have some context as to if that's a good price or not. Is this um, in response to a problem that's been mostly consistent or uh, has this been uh, uh, in recent months and years a growing problem? Well, healthcare costs in general have been going up for decades um, at an unsustainable rate, and, and we're really reaching the breaking point now. So uh, back again, in our system, we don't have any controls. So there's not really a lot of government controls on what you spend in terms, in terms of healthcare, and, they're, and they're, the patient is not empowered with the information to make their own decisions for healthcare. And so you, you just have, you have a lot of wasteful um, spending. Um, and and that's, this, is, this is an attempt to get at that core component on the patient side. These two provisions that are in the budget, of course, House Bill 157 deals with the, on the physician side, the insurance side, uh, pharmaceutical and, and medical equipment uh, purchasing, you know, kind of the whole spectrum, which is what's needed. But what we were able to get in the budget really empowers the patient with information. So providing information to the patient, some transparency, obviously good for the uh, customer, the consumer. Can you talk a little bit more about what this will mean statewide, maybe from a state government standpoint? Well, um, back to our budget. So our budget, we've, uh, when Medicaid first um, came on the scene in the 70s, it was 15% of our state budget. Uh, now it's 29%. Um, that's his only state spending. So again, to, to, if you add federal spending into that, we just crossed the 50% mark. 
So more and more of our budget is being taken up by healthcare spending. That means less and less is available for education, especially, which is the other major thing we, we do um, and spend money on, uh, but also corrections, infrastructure, everything else that, that really already is being stretched. And we're already having, uh, even in a growing economy, uh, more resources are needed there, and we have less and less resources available because healthcare spending has been increasing so much. Even in even when we had our eight billion dollar budget deficit, Medicaid spending went up by over a billion. Um, so it is it is a, a a clear and present danger to our state and to the nation. Uh, and instead of complaining about it, we have a solution. Um, so the things we've been discussing have uh, been signed into law. Uh, in the uh, state operating budget. Where do you see these issues going in the future? Are you working on other legislation as well? Well, that's what I mentioned before, House Bill 157. These, um, these components are in House Bill 157, the transparency piece and the Healthy Ohio piece. And quite frankly, those were probably some of the most contentious um, provisions in House Bill 157 with some of, some of the stakeholders out there. So we really were pleased that they passed in the budget. Um, other provisions, uh, one of them has to do with, uh, back to that patient-physician interaction. Um, so the patient might um, ask for or otherwise per, um, have some symptoms that really aren't say, telling the doctor that there, there needs to be a test or a scan, but they're going to go ahead and order it anyway because it doesn't cost them anything, and then they're protecting themselves so they don't get sued later. So they'll order every test in the book, and that's called defensive medicine, uh, or prescribe unnecessary you know, prescriptions or consults, more appointments. I mean, all that, just tremendous wasteful spending. So one of the key provisions of House Bill 157 has to do with uh, eliminating the incentive uh, for physicians to order all these tests and, having a, and improving the ability for patients to receive compensation uh, when they're injured by not having physicians be part of the system at all, uh, not having them be able to be sued but still have insurance companies compensating the patients and, and much, more, um, uh, much more quickly and easily for the patients when right now it's really difficult. So that's, a, that's one, of the, one of the other major provisions along with um, and you could say that's what you, when you, House Bill 157 is, a, is a, a very comprehensive bill, but pooling all of our purchasing power, all the money we spend as a state, not just in Medicaid, um, but for um, employee um, benefits, uh, for schools, for everything else, we spend a, you know, in different little silos, we're, we're contracting and trying to buy prescription medications and medical equipment. Um, and in, just then again, another free market reform, let's pull all of our purchasing power together um, and, and then negotiate with, uh, with these manufacturers so we can get a lower price. Um, we have a couple minutes left. Uh, at the end of each program, we have our guests share with uh, their constituents back in the district how they can reach you here at the State House in Columbus. Um, well, you can uh, call me on my, my, uh, my phone number, which is 614-644-6008, uh, or you can call me on my cell phone, which is 937-902-9737. Cell phone's probably best. Uh, or you can email me at jim.butler at ohiohouse.gov. And that information is uh, also located at the bottom of the screen. Representative, we hey, really appreciate your insights today. Thanks a lot. And we look forward to seeing you again on the next edition of Ohio in Focus, a program that brings state government to you. Thanks for watching.